The graph of f of x equals 1 divided by x, or y equals 1 divided by x, is shown in black on this graph here. We want to match each equation with the correct graph, also graphed on the same coordinate plane. So this graph is pretty messy. The first thing we should recognize is the basic function f of x equals 1 divided by x would be the graph of this function here, graphed here in black, where one piece is in the first quadrant, and the second piece is in the third quadrant. And the first equation given is y equals one divided by the quantity x minus three, which we should recognize would be equivalent to changing the input of f to x minus three. So this is equivalent to f of the quantity x minus three. If we compare these function notations, notice how in the given function f of x, when x is zero or the input is zero, it'll actually take larger values of x for this function to get the same inputs. Notice it takes next value of three to get an input of zero into this function. And therefore, this actually shifts the graph three units to the right, and therefore this equation would produce graph b. Notice graph b, this piece and this piece, is the graph of f of x shifted three units to the right. So this would be b. Next we have y equals one divided by x minus three, which again, this would be equivalent to the function f of x minus the constant three. Again, f of x is one divided by x, and we're subtracting three. So notice for this equation, we're subtracting three from the function values of f of x or the y values of f of x. Because we're subtracting three from the y values of f of x, this will be the graph of the basic function f of x shifted down three units. So going back over to our graph, notice how if we shift the black graph down three units in the third quadrant here, and in the first quadrant here, We have the graph of the blue function or graph C. Next we have y equals negative one divided by x. And again, if f of x equals one divided by x, this would be equivalent to negative f of x. So notice this function is changing the sign of all the function values or the y values of the basic function y equals one divided by x. So if we change the sign of all of the y coordinates, it's going to reflect the graph across the x-axis. So again, starting with the basic function highlighted here in yellow, if we reflect this across the x-axis, notice how we get the graph of the green function in the second quadrant, and here in the fourth quadrant. And therefore, y equals negative one divided by x would give us graph D, or the green graph. And then finally, we have y equals three divided by x, which we could also write as three times one divided by x, which would be equivalent to three times f of x. So notice in this case, we would be multiplying the y values or function values of f of x by three, and therefore this would stretch the graph vertically. So going back over to our graph, if we start with the basic function y equals one divided by x and stretch it vertically, it would be stretched in this direction here in the first quadrant and this direction here in the third quadrant, which would give us the graph of the red function here and here. And therefore, y equals three divided by x would be the red graph or graph A.
So with practice, if we're given a basic function and then a variation of the function, we should be able to recognize the type of transformation that has occurred. I'll leave you with a quick review of the basic transformations. Here we have reflections across the x and y axis. Here we have vertical shifts up or down. Here we have horizontal shifts left. Here we have vertical stretches or vertical compressions. And finally, here we have horizontal stretches and horizontal compressions. I hope you found this helpful.